Hey everybody and welcome. This is The Commotion and I'm Roshan Joshi. And today we have a very special guest. We have Yulia Veliguskaya and I definitely butchered your last name so you're going to have to help me fix that. Yeah. Uh, it's a Veliguskaya. Veliguskaya. So Yulia Veliguskaya. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Um hey guys, we are in the Earth Shakers right now. Uh, Yulia is one of the many people that we on the commotion count as Earth Shakers, uh, people within their community and environment that are uh, changing the road, changing the pace a little bit, and uh, really expanding their wings and bringing substance to our world right now. So if you guys want to see more content and more cool guests like this, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you like any music on our page, check out Be The Human. His link is in the description below. Hey, how you doing, Yulia? Welcome. I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me on. I don't know. Thank you for, uh, for taking some time out to come on uh, the show with us. We really appreciate you doing that. A um, little background for anyone tuning in. Uh, Yulia is uh, part of a... Actually, you know what? I'll allow you. Uh, let me allow you to uh, intro yourself. For sure. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, I am a business person, but I am also a designer. Uh, I run and own Studio Cult, which is my accessories brand. I make jewelry, pins, patches, handbags, um, really anything in the whole ex world of accessories. Love it. And guys, uh, we're going to definitely dive more into Studio Cult. Uh, there is a little Easter egg within this uh, segment today. So if you guys want a promo code, make sure you watch. You'll see a Easter egg promo code pop up in the, uh, in the lower third in the bottom. So definitely check us all out and uh, you'll get an opportunity to get some awesome stuff at a lower price. Great. Um, so, Yulia, so Studio Cult, tell me a little bit more about uh, you guys. Where are you, where are you uh, based out of? How long have you been doing it? Yeah, so uh, we've been in business for oh, going on three years uh, this November. Oh, no, actually, no, earlier, uh, this July. And uh, we're based out of Brooklyn, New York. And we make accessories for millennials, particularly those that spent a little bit too much time on the internet as they were growing up. Uh, so we make a lot of accessories that reference pop culture, the internet, um, a lot of nostalgic references as well. There, it's a very fun, quirky brand. Okay, uh, awesome. Um, so you're taking a little bit of uh, the references of the world and kind of creating your own uh, brand out of it. So you, you guys mainly um, tailor in accessories? Uh, yes. So... The brand started out, um, I'm not sure if you want a, a little bit of backstory. Absolutely, to, absolutely. Uh, where I was. So I started the brand at a time when um, I had studied architecture. I went through four years of architecture school and then I got my first job and I felt a little bit, I felt a little bit stifled because uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar here with um, the profession of architecture, but making something just takes a very long time. You have to wait years to see the fruits of your labor and uh, be in that field for years to be able to make any kind of impactful decisions. So after about a year of um, working at a really great firm, I decided to go my separate ways and, and make things by myself. So um, it started as a, I decided to take a couple months off. I live with my parents and um, I just needed a break from uh, my degree, which was super grueling, the demands of my old job. I'm like, you know what, let me just chill for a little bit. <laughs> and um, I decided to uh, make my own course of study. And I tried to um, research, I'm like, you know, what can I make that's not gonna cost me so much money? What is the lowest barrier to entry? in order to start my own business and create things on my own terms. And um, I started, I noticed that there was this community of people who would make these little pins. And I'm like, you know what? I can probably do the same thing too. Um, I saw big companies making them. I saw small companies making them, uh, complete amateurs. Um, 
So I'm like, okay, I think I have five years of design uh, under my belt. <laughs> I can probably do this too. Uh, so that's how it started. Wow, that's um, it's very reflective of a lot of uh, entrepreneurial stories that I've heard where it's um, you are doing what you thought would be your future. You found out that it, you didn't really fit that specific mold. The other thing is you took parental support when needed. That's usually how it works out so that you could allocate and save money. And then you broke off into a space that you thought would be more um, suited for you, essentially becoming your own boss. Yeah, absolutely. And there's absolutely no shame in um, living with your parents. If there's uh, anyone right now that's listening that's uh, in college and you're a little bit confused, just live with your parents. You don't have to start life so so fast. Um, give yourself some breathing room. Absolutely. I mean, if you listen to guys like, uh, like Gary V, you know, he will always, always, always tell anybody that wants to get into an entrepreneurship, save money where you can. And your living costs are huge. So it's either, you know, if you want to kind of uh, create the foundation for the rest of your life, you got to take some hits somewhere, whether it be uh, living with your parents, which is, if that's possible, you do it, or you, you know, you're living with five, six, seven roommates, uh, just so that you're able to save money on on housing, and you can allocate that towards towards starting your own business. So it's it's definitely there is absolutely no shame in it. I have uh, heard from many entrepreneurs that that is actually one of the best ways to uh, kind of get yourself picked up off the ground. You're not spending a thousand dollars a month on on housing. Yeah, or a little more than that if you're in New York City. Oh, geez, uh, for for but- a shoebox, right? Yeah. No. Well, basically, I, I live in a cube right now. It's a it's a nice cube, but it's still a cube. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And the thing that I wanted to talk about next is the, the space that I had at the time allowed me to have the mental clarity to basically create an overnight, overnight in quotes, I want to say, success, um, which was my first piece of jewelry that went viral on the internet. It was spread like wildfire. I had uh, zero followers at the time. I was nobody, but um, in the, I'll explain kind of how uh, I created this, this piece of jewelry. Um, so uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, no, that's great. And wonderful segue, actually. Um, so yeah. let's actually go right into uh, just some of your work, and then we'll kind of go into the framework afterwards. Uh, so this viral piece that you're talking about, this was the uh, MS Paint pin. Um, yeah, yeah. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, let me do that. And also, I see the nostalgic because uh, MS Paint, we all, grew up, we all grew up with MS Paint before Photoshop, trying to uh, change up whatever we need to, so. Yeah, I, I could argue that this program was really what um, one of the first things that uh, helped me start my career as a designer. If uh, and yeah, so um, that first product uh, that you were speaking of, and that's a wonderful segue that you just made as well, uh, is the MS Paint um, pin that you, you sent over, which I'm very uh, that was very exciting for me because the amount of nostalgia that I felt from seeing that. Uh, just, just MS Paint, the old program, the original Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and the reason why I chose MS Paint as the subject of the first piece of jewelry was, uh, like I was saying, I found this community of people who made these pins. And for one, about a month, I spent t- the time that I had researching everything that there is to know about this community, what people valued in this type of jewelry. Um, And I came down to four or five common denominators. So the first thing that people in the pin community or pin collectors value is uh, relatability. Uh, Is it something that you can identify like MS Paint that almost every uh, person around our age uh, knows what it is and has some sort of fond memory with? Um, Then it's also the craft. Um, How well is it made? Is it... um, something new and exciting is uh, some sort of process that hasn't been used before. Uh, I see some people put LEDs in pins and springs and all sorts of things. It's super cool. Um, yeah, the pin community is really, really great and fun in that way. Um, the third, um, some people argue about this point, but I think the bigger, the better, the more obnoxious and large and interesting you can make it. Um, that's awesome. And it's also um, eye catching. So 
Uh, sometimes when people post the pin next to other pins that they have in the collection, you'll just see this big giant block of metal that's in the middle of their pin collection. So you really can't miss it. And um, the third, there's also a sense of community. Um, sometimes people buy pins for political reasons so that they can identify with a certain movement. So in this case, I think it is, MS Paint is that symbol of the only child that spent too much time on the internet. Um, and yeah, once I understood these things, I'm like, MS Paint has to be the thing. It's the perfect pin. Um, so yeah, that's how I came to the conclusion of making it. No, I love it. And then as you said, like community as well. If I saw somebody wearing something from my nostalgia, even something little, I'm the kind of guy that's uh, going to stop him for a second and be like, awesome, awesome pin, awesome shoes, awesome jacket, whatever <laughs> the case may be. If I think it's something that uh, directly connects to me, that's uh, that sense of community. That's that sense of uh, interaction. So I love it. No, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And that makes a lot of sense uh, strategy wise, brand wise as well. It keeps you guys yeah. very on target. It's very important to, when you start your business, to identify the group of people that you're serving. And I think that this is particularly uh, difficult explaining to artists and creatives as well, because um, oftentimes we go out into the world and we're like, oh, we want to make something cool. But if you don't think about why someone wants it or who it's going to belong to, it's definitely a quick way to fail. Um, so yeah, that is definitely uh, the product research portion of uh, the R&D that happens at Studio Cult is crucial to its success. Absolutely. And so you said you're, you're still a, a little less than three years old, yet you, one, have had a pretty massive success uh, so far, God blessing, and hopefully continues on. Um, but like, Tell me a little, like, what's your age? How old are you? Uh, I'm 25 now. So, so you're 25 years old. And at the age of 22, you decided to become an entrepreneur. And, um, and now you are, you know, not even three years later, you followed your passion and you are um, successful. You're successful within your industry. Yeah, definitely. Um, and oftentimes, <laughs> sometimes I have to remind myself of that because it's so easy to be hard on yourself. But um, yeah, it's, it's important to remember that I'm still young and, um, I've done quite a lot. <laughs> uh, no, great. Uh, just so that like people get like a little bit of an understanding on what you do and, uh, all the processes that you have to actually go through, um, for being an entrepreneur, owning your own business and having actual physical products. Uh, I guess, let me, let me excite everybody first and then we'll go into the processes. Uh, why don't you tell me what your, I guess, projected, obviously things have changed due to the pandemic. Why don't you give like uh, everybody a little insight on like what your projections for this year would have looked like? Um, I think we're, we might still be on target depending on how things unfold, especially now awesome. that- Congratulations, um, by the way. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Especially now that more people are sitting at home and bored and shopping and the internet economy is growing, uh, we're projecting half, about like half a million in sales this year. That, that is absolutely incredible. So one, hats off to you. Half a million in sales is no joke. And two, um, this is something that within three years as a 22 year old, you put down, you strived, you probably had more than enough sleepless nights. You're probably still not sleeping. Um, but uh, the amount of success that you retained, uh, that's immense. So congratulations to you as well. Um, Thank you so much. How large is your team? So uh, I have a, basically a full-time employee that works with me. She does customer service. Um, any kind of admin stuff. She writes emails. She's a great writer. She's really funny. If you get um, a funny email from us that's about a blog or a horoscope that we released, she wrote it. Um, she's uh, an all-star. And then the other big part of our team, which is not um, someone that we hire within uh, our studio, but it's actually a warehouse that we hire to do all of our fulfillment. They're uh, based in Belleville, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Um, Shout out New Jersey. Yeah, yeah New Jersey strong. <laughs> um, so it's a pretty lean operation. No, absolutely. It doesn't look like there's a lot of fat around the edges. Uh, mm -mm. 
no, and that's how you have to do it. You have to be economical. You have to be smart and you have to uh, manage however much money you can properly to either reinvest in your business or to be able to live off of. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm glad that you actually touched upon your uh, supply chain a little bit. So why don't you tell us how something goes from inception, uh, a concept that you've thought up to a physical product that's going onto the shelves? Uh, yeah, so let's, um, let's start this from after we've done the product research. So let's say you've identified um, a niche already, you've identified the perfect product, uh, and you've done all of that. Then the next step is to try to find a manufacturer. Uh, likely it will be in China. Uh, of course, it's better to try to manufacture something in the United States, but um, un unfortunately, it is much harder to get people to work with you in the United States, um, especially for minimums. The minimums here are so high, it, it is a little bit impenetrable. Whereas if you work in China, you can get a factory to uh, make a smaller amount of units for you. Uh, so the next step would be trying to find a manufacturer. And uh, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Of course, it depends uh, what industry you are in, what you're trying to make. Uh, but now you're, this is the point where you have to vet the, the partners that you select to manufacture your items. And um, the best way to do that is to start ordering samples. Uh, best thing you can possibly do is go see uh, uh, manufacturers at trade shows and meet them in person mm -hmm. that way that you know that you're more serious and you're willing to go out of your way to uh, build a relationship with them um, and then sometimes it is a little bit of a shot in the dark you're like okay well I will I got this great sample for you from you but that doesn't always guarantee that the the bulk order will be great so I've gone through a few manufacturers that they promise you the world it's kind of the culture there. Mm -hmm. um, they're very, um, they're, they will make a lot of promises, but it's not exactly always the case. It's, uh, it's all for the sale. They're just trying to get your business at the end of the day. Yeah. And it, it's not a commentary on, um, you know. Uh, all manufacturers, just, you know, sometimes every once in a while, you're going to get people that want to improve their business. So they're going to put their, um, their products that they have on the window out, uh, their customer facing. So I understand completely what you mean. If you have a bulk order of a thousand, um, you don't want 200 of those having issues. Exactly. Um, and if the order size is big enough, you can hire a third party inspection service to go there. They'll provide you a super detailed report, but then again, it has to make sense. Um, I know that there's a, there's one service that I use that costs about $300 for them to come out for a day and test a certain percentage of the product. For instance, I didn't even know that was a thing. So we're learning here. I know it's pretty incredible. The, the things that you have to go through, the hoops that you have to jump through in the United States to get something made do not exist in China. I can come to someone and be like, I want you to make this specific thing. No questions asked. They just make it all in-house for you. Where in the United States, you might have to go to this one place, then have them send it to a different place. It's, uh, it's definitely a lot less streamlined here. And uh, I also understand, like, you have to just have your foot in, you know, you have to have some footholds or, or uh, traction already going in manufacturing for the United States. Of course, we would all love to do that. Uh, but sometimes it just also takes proof of concept as well. Totally. I mean, I could speak a little bit more um, in uh, about the jewelry industry, actually. So yeah. it's a bit notorious for uh, ripping people off that are newbies or newcomers uh, to the industry. If they can tell that you uh, don't really know what you're talking about, they will rip you off. Um, it, I'm speaking, of, I'm not sure about other cities, but in New York City, that's kind of the the vibe you should always have a referral you should name drop someone and uh say hey like this person sent me so you you feel a little more protected um understandably so and especially since you're you're a young person um and now that you're a young person you're out there you're dealing with uh with companies that are already already established it it's a little tougher because and this is obviously not a negative. This is just a perception of the world, unfortunately. Um, 
it's, it's definitely tougher for not only young people, but women as well that are in business, uh, which is something that made me so happy that you said yes to coming on to, uh, because not only are you a very successful entrepreneur, but you are a successful woman that is an entrepreneur um, in business. That is, of course, they're out there, but we always like to push more on it. The, you seem as if, uh, you know, my future five-year-old will look at you and be like, oh, wow, that, that lady's badass. Oh, that's such an honor. Yeah, it's, uh, it gets a little bit lonely, honestly. I have a, many male friends that own businesses, but sometimes I do wish that I had more women to speak to. Um, I have one. She's actually my mentor. Uh, she uh, has a, a business that builds software for uh, accounting. And, um, yeah, I'm really happy to have her in my life. Otherwise I don't have too many other women who are also in business that I know. Yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately, and, and thank, thank God it's, uh, changing and things are, are, uh, kind of growing, but it is unfortunately a very real fact that, uh, it is very tough for women to be able to get their fair share or be able to even have that serious conversation when you have two guys in front of you that are probably nowhere near as smart as you but the egos are out the door you know <laughs> oh my goodness i've had so many experiences like this um yeah you find yourself in situations like uh even in why, why don't you share a story <laughs> share a story yeah okay i have a funny one so this one was a, a bit more from my personal life um, i had a friend who was dating this guy and she's like oh his roommate wants to hang out with you too i'm like okay that's nice we'll go on a little double date and then uh we had a date he never called back because he was being super chauvinistic and male I'm like oh well like, i'm not gonna call this girl back even though i told her i was gonna take her on a date but then i had a birthday party Right. I had a birthday party and I invited my friend and her guy uh, that I told you about in the beginning of the story. And uh, they saw at the time I had this studio space and it was super cool. And uh, both of the roommates, the two guys, they had no idea who I was. Uh, they assumed that I was just selling like peddling little crafts at uh, fairs. And uh, as soon as uh, the party ended, he um, told his roommate about who I was, and then he started actually having interest in me. And uh, it's stuff like that happened to me all the time. It was super frustrating that you don't get taken seriously, or as soon as you hear like, oh, like a woman makes jewelry, you like think that her career is just selling on Etsy for a hundred bucks every other week. <laughs> um, uh so in, insane. And it's uh, definitely got to be one of those things in the back of your mind that you get a little satisfaction from when, when kind of people find out exactly who you are. Yeah, it's, it is satisfying. But sometimes it's, I, I wonder how many opportunities uh, I might have missed because I was a woman. Uh, you are not was <laughs> or, and you will yeah. and you will continue to yeah. be one the whole your whole life so there may be missed opportunities moving forward but there may also be um within those missed opportunities i think the best opportunity or the best thing that uh a person can do is bring inspiration to others so although you may miss a few opportunities because the world kind of stinks uh you're gaining a lot of inspiration from uh, the younger generation. I mean, totally. you're 25 years old and you are projected for half a million dollars in revenue from business you created three years ago. Those are, you know, those are all, and I could only imagine uh, what the next five years is going to look like for you, the next 10 years is going to look like for you. So totally. you, may, you may lose that little bit of an opportunity, uh, not even a little bit. You may lose opportunities because uh, unfortunately we, live in a very um, chauvinistic society. But uh, on the flip of that, uh, you're part of the change. You're helping create that change. You're helping create those seeds to be able to blossom change into the world. So, Yeah, thank you. And you know what? If anyone finds himself in a similar position, you don't even want to work with the people who underestimated you. You don't need their help. Um, and it 
I, I like to live by that philosophy. I never saw that guy ever again. I ignored <laughs> him. <laughs> you lost, buddy. You lost. Um, so going back to it, uh, why don't you um, – all right. So I, we were actually talking about manufacturers. Um, so say after you have uh, your manufactured product uh, assessed, made sure that uh, you can pick a manufacturer. Is that where we left off, where you can pick a manufacturer? Yes. Where so, would you go from there? Like, how do we, what's the next step in that chain? Well, there's a few other things that you should, I would even backtrack a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I would say you will need to figure out how you're planning to fulfill all these things. Uh, are you going to hire a warehouse right off the bat to do the fulfillment for you? Or are you going to tough it out and do it yourself, have some fr- friends help you as you start your business? So I would get really clear on that. Um, Make sure you have enough space. Are you doing it at your garage? Are you doing it out of your apartment? Um, get very clear on the logistics of that because shipping can get pretty crazy real fast, uh, which I, I realized as I had my first product go viral and I, oh, yeah, that was tough. Um, I did not have the uh, infrastructure in place. Um, and we're going we're gonna to jump back to your first product going viral uh, after we go through the supply chain just because um, I want to know that experience as well. For sure. It, everything must have been on fire, you know? It was, it was pretty wild, honestly. I, I'd like to talk about that, that experience a little uh, in more detail as well. Awesome. Um, and then the next thing I would figure out is how are you planning to sell these things? How are you going to market to people? And this is a very, very important part of the well, – all these – parts of the equation are important, but anyone can spend money on inventory. But if you can't get the people to come just because you built it doesn't mean the people will come. You need to figure out how are you going to let people know you exist? How are you going to relate to them? How do you know that they will trust you? Uh, People are super sensitive these days to information being stolen. Even to today, I get emails saying like, how do I know you're a real business despite all the social proof that I have? Um, so these are very important questions to figure out. Definitely who you're targeting and how you're doing it as well. Yes. Yes. Um, so then how do you, um, how do you get the product out to the masses or the people? So I think this is a good time for me to start talking about how I launched the first. Okay, product. that's great. That's great. So why don't we? Why don't we? Uh, we'll we'll switch gears and we'll get a little learning via story. Yeah, I think this would be more helpful than just talking about the individual pieces. So yeah. um, I I spoke about my product research. There is that whole month long uh, period where I figured out exactly what people wanted, why, how. Um, am I planning to sell them? And this, so in my case, my community who mostly existed on Instagram. So I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to market. Um, I found my people where they are, and now I have to figure out how to get the word out. So within the space of uh, pin people, <laughs> there are a few. We'll say, we'll not- say accessories because that's exactly what it is as well. But no, this is pre-accessories. Now I make jewelry and Understood. all these things. Understood. My but, bad. Ah, yeah. No worries. At the time, it was uh, pin collectors, pin enthusiasts, pin creators. And these groups aren't as popular now. Enamel pins were at the height of their popularity, I would say, in 2016. And they're still popular, but not as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Urban Outfitters was selling them like crazy. It was a whole big thing. Uh, so... A few years ago, these pin repost accounts, they're kind of these pin influencers. They would post the latest and greatest of pin designs. And they still do, but they're just not as effective Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays. Um, I found five accounts and I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay each of them their fee. Each of them had a different amount that they asked for per post. I'm going to have an all post on the same day. And, uh, I'm just going to set it and forget it. At the time, I had like 26 followers in my account. There was barely anyone there. I had one post. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, I sent out the money. I gave them the plan, picked the day. I was kind of tired that day. And I just shut the laptop down, went to bed. And then I woke up later, I think, the next day. And I started seeing um, 
more traction. Um, they posted it that morning and um, I started getting more followers. I'm like, oh, this is pretty healthy. This is good. But then it started to amplify and it, it was getting out of hand. I think in like the first couple of days of like my Instagram, I had like 5,000 followers. Jeez. Um, you you from, lit a yeah. match and you got a forest fire. Yeah, exactly. And it was the, the reason why this happened. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing just because you make a, a dress with flowers um, for a young 25 year old woman who likes flowers. Um, it's that's not enough. You really need to hit like a specific nerve, really research something so much that you understand the core value for people who are searching for the specific thing. Um, you need to know this this product that you're creating and the needs of the people as well as you know yourself, I would say. And I think that's the reason why it did so well. Like I really struck a nerve with all these people who were, this was such a fond memory for them. And not only was it, it's not just, uh, you have people these days who print uh, t-shirts with designs and they sell them. This was like a perfectly crafted, um, yeah, like if we can pull the image up, yep, it's like yep. a perfectly crafted um, rendition of what this program would look like if you can hold it. The buttons are three dimensional. All the the colors, little paint swatches, look like a little paint palette. It almost looks like you can like click the buttons. And I think that um, it was really something magical that I made, and it's one of my proudest pieces of work. Uh, I mean, even the paint, even like the actual paint rose that you see. Um, it looks like little droplets of paint. Yeah, yeah. So I think just it was the perfect storm, I, I want to say, of, of, of things that happened. And it got popular really, really quickly. Um, all these art accounts that I looked up to, that I saw them post all of the cool art. Um, like, oh, I'll never, I'll never get on there. But I was, they posted my work and it was one of the most gratifying feelings ever. Um, but th let's get to the exciting part. So, <laughs> so I have the Shopify uh, app on my phone and I start seeing the, the sales come in and it, my phone's on my desk and it's like buzzing, like buzz, 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 buzz. And it was like sales, like every, every other second. And I was starting to panic and my heart was like, <laughs> Oh my God, I don't know what to do. It's like something that I dreamed of, of since I was a little girl to have my own store and I, it, my first thing was such a success that it was, it was really something I, I don't even have the words, I guess right now to describe what it felt like. Um, but shortly after, even though this great success happened, then I had to start figuring out, well, how do I fulfill these orders? <laughs> how do I deal with, um, I, I made another order. So this is the funny part. Uh, the yeah, how much did your first batch look like? <laughs> So I ordered, I think, a hundred or a hundred and fifty items. It was very low. I'm like, oh, this will last me for months. It sold out within a day. Jeez. And then I ordered the next batch. Next batch comes in. Fifty percent of it was garbage. Oh no, more than it. It was. It was just trash. So uh, these were some of the growing pains that I had. So I had to. It was so sad. I couldn't even recycle them because they're um they're they are already a recycled metal. Uh, they're <laughs> a mixture of metals and you can't really melt them down anymore. So unfortunately they all had to go in the bin, but, um, then I had to, yeah, answer those types of questions like, okay, well, when's the next batch coming? Cause I had people pre-order those and I was thinking that I would have enough. Um, so I think you can kind of see the point of how, uh, <laughs> more money, more problems. Uh, the initial success was incredible, but. Uh, it comes with a lot of responsibility. Absolutely. A, a lot of people take the journey as, um, you know, uh, lightly as once I get on the plateau, it's all gravy from there. But it's like, no, once you get on the plateau, now you got about a hundred more steps. You still got to keep on climbing before you're even comfortable. Yeah, that's a great thing that you bring up because even at this point, I think there are some young artists or, or at any age, uh, people who might be like, oh, you know, I wish I can 
sell my jewelry and make that much money. But oh my goodness, the things that I have to think about now, it's I have, I wear 10 different hats and I absolutely love what I do, but it does take a very certain type of person to uh, keep up. Um, yeah. There's a saying that I really like, and uh, <laughs> it's it's one of my favorite sayings about careers. Uh, so I'm, it's uh, sorry, I have to curse, but uh, for a full effect. <laughs> no, no, give it to it. us. Give it to us. So uh, I forget who this is by. Um, I read it in a book once, but uh, when it comes to your career, pick your favorite flavor of <laughs> sandwich and eat it. <laughs> because no matter what, you will always. Um, run into some sort of issues some people might look at athletes and say wow that's the best career ever but there's no matter what you do you're gonna have to put up with a lot of bs and if you can deal with yeah if you can deal with having to put out 10 fires at a time uh thinking about like not only do i have to be a, a business person but i'm the designer i'm the marketer i'm the the product manager uh if that kind of lifestyle suits you, then if you get bored easily, this might be the thing for you. Okay. And I like how you brought up a point uh, where any type of success that you drop into, it comes with baggage. Uh, you said athletics. Uh, yeah, you play a game, but then you're not physically able to move for the next like two days. Um, like I know, I don't even know. Guys, you know, they they can't even they can't even move for the next like two days. That's why they have practice so much, so many days later, just because of that rest and recovery. Just a very good example. You're always gonna have your own road with your own obstacles. And as uh, Yulia said earlier, um, pick a sandwich because <laughs> and find the one that you like best because it's all it's all gonna be there. It's just a matter of finding out what is worth the time effort and dedication and once you find that out things kind of pan out a little bit easier at least from my experiences yeah i think uh whatever you choose make sure it's authentic to yourself because if you're going to do something for the money you're not going to be happy you might get the money but you will end up really miserable Uh, i mean take for instance people who work in finance not saying this is all of them but it's it's not uncommon for people to find themselves in a position where they don't even enjoy the wealth that they've accrued and it it turns Uh, into like mental i mean jim carrey says it uh says it best and he says uh you know you have all the money in the world but your mental health is the most important thing in the world you can't buy absolutely no way i love that no absolutely and that's a great uh great message to everyone as well Uh, All right, so go right back into it. You you had batch number one, batch number two. You're starting to try to fulfill these orders. Um, How'd you you get your supply chain going? How'd you get it out to these people? So, yeah, I, um, as soon as I found, let's go back to the situation where um, the second order had all of this junk, basically, that they sent me. I was arguing with, like, the factory. I was like, what in the world is this? And it took maybe, like, three days of going back and forth and being angry for them to send me a new batch. And it got marginally better. It was better than the last shipment. Um, but not by much. Now what, what happens if you get a bad batch? Like, do you have to eat it? Do they have to eat it? Like who, who's accountable for, for like a mess up like that? So if you, uh, there's a few sourcing platforms you can use and they have protections that they set. Mm-hmm. on um it's called a uh, can i uh, name drop or yeah, like name what drop. The if, services if, are you're good yeah cool so um the first manufacturers that i found were on alibaba and i found other manufacturers on there that were awesome that okay. i still use to this day and i still use the platform but yeah sometimes you'll hit a dud and um they have uh something called trade assurance where you can apply for a refund and show your evidence of uh, the whatever you ordered being damaged so you have that available to them however um, you get yourself into some tricky situations like I've I've tried really hard to find a manufacturer that can make this product for me and no one can do it right so I almost yeah at a certain point what I would do is I would 
I would pay for 2,000 units, but I would account for at least 1,000 of them to be crappy. So I would just eat it. Mm. Um, and then at a certain point, um, when you start ordering enough units, you can have an inspection service go out there to make it worth it for yourself. And um, they can do the checking for you before they ship it out. Okay. Learning a yeah. lot. Yeah. And I think it's also important um, to be very professional with your manufacturers and when you start working with them write out contracts be like okay well i need uh, we need to agree that this for example this batch will be done in 30 days and every week that it's overdue you take uh, x amount of uh discount on on the shipment uh and and that's one way that you can you can kind of work with them when you're playing on a small scale you're just starting out and even at, at my level you don't have enough money to hire to have someone uh help you legally or if you get ripped off it's it's tough doing uh international business i mean i don't want to scare anyone and this type of stuff doesn't happen hasn't happened too often to me but it's just a real world, uh, yeah. real world ping, guys. There's always going to be a little bit of pitfalls or dangers anywhere you go. So it's extremely important to protect yourself, uh, not only um, within the docile of what you're doing, but as on an international platform as well, if you're playing in that type of field. But just make sure that you have that legal representation or protection, even though sometimes, as Yulia said, it is kind of expensive, you know. Yeah, you, you can do what you can. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I would not get too upset, cut your losses, and just think of it as paying the school of life. <laughs> yeah, the school of hard knocks. No, we all have to pay yeah. our dues somehow. Absolutely. I am with that. Uh, what was the biggest order that you've had? Like, what have you seen that was like, a damn, that was a big batch? Um, as far as how many units I've ordered or something? Sure. I don't really fully know what I'm asking anyway. So it's <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no, yeah. How many how many units you've had within a within an order? Uh, I've ordered four thousand pieces at a Jeez. time of a design. Yeah, um, I can afford to do that because like my products are smaller. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it sounds like a big number, I and mean, it can be quite expensive. Well, the but, reason I'm uh, saying geez is because uh, you're putting four thousand out. Probably, you know, three thousand five hundred of those are being sold. Yeah, um, I think if a four thousand uh, unit order would last me of like a popular product, maybe uh, throughout the year, um, okay. they get sold, and then it's one of maybe what 60 items that we sell now so awesome and i love the growth you started off with uh just one pin one concept one idea and now you have more than 60 products on your on your site yeah and so we started yeah we started as a pin company but now we make jewelry and handbags and um the dream is to make shoes i would really love to make make shoes soon. Uh, those are a bit more cost intensive. There's a lot that's involved with making the molds because you have different sizes of feet and each one of those needs like a different, uh, you know, base oh. <laughs> if you're making sneakers. So, uh, yeah, we make lots of things now. <laughs> okay. No. And that's great. You have, uh, even though you are still growing, you constantly have a further vision or further goal in mind. Um, which is great, keeps you motivated, keeps you running forward. Yeah, and I would say, maybe this is just my own personal challenge, but uh, I do find it a little bit hard to know, uh, like, what am I really capable of? Because when I started this business, I didn't, I couldn't imagine that it turned into what it did today. And uh, I think the the idea of what's possible is always shifting and always is always moving forward. So. Uh, I think my own yeah, personal challenge is to to think bigger and think outside of the box and be a little more audacious like a man would be in business. I mean, at this point, you're, uh, <laughs> you're doing things your own way. And, yeah. and I, I, I absolutely love that. Oh, man. This is really cool. I, I actually would not have... Um, just being a regular guy in the street, I would not have uh, assumed that this much success would come from uh, this uh, 
facet. So, but you know, even there's even success within uh, guys that make the rubber bands, you know? So very, very interesting throughout this whole entire. So this has been like a, a kind of a journey for you um, in a sense. Like, what do you think you've learned about yourself within this journey? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I think the thing that I really love about being an entrepreneur is that you you watch yourself change uh, as a person. There's no one telling you what to do. There's no one parenting you. Your success is a complete result of of your ability to adapt and your integrity. Uh, it's it's really one of I think I'm biased, but one of the coolest uh, professions to be in is in is in business. And you not only do you change, but you get to create a world for other people. If your business is is like that, I you know oil companies are kind of destroying the world and they're creating a different kind of world for people. But um, I think that in especially what's going on with right now, if I can offer uh, people a little bit of happiness with some silly thing that they can wear uh it's it's really rewarding even more than whatever uh material uh success that comes from it i love that i like how you pinged on uh the world is kind of changing uh from certain industries we just dropped a video about um the colonization or elon musk's plan to colonize mars uh for the human race to eventually go go over there and be a multi-planet species so guys make sure you go back into our playlist and you check out our living on mars video uh if you have any interest in seeing what that would look like now that is a man with boundless vision you know it'd be great to just be like hey i'm gonna start a space company say what you want about him but something i do admire about him is his just ability to just create the impossible <laughs> no absolutely absolutely i'm 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 a big proponent of the guy so uh so i know everybody has different opinions and examples uh that they lead by or live by um me personally i think that uh just making sure that we take care of ourselves as uh, a race and making sure that we take care of our planet uh whatever little things that we can do uh to be effective awesome the fact that one specific human being has taken uh that thought process and brought it on a larger scale and instead of saying whatever little things we can do he said whatever large things i could do um that is that is great that's inspiring and uh even if people don't agree with it that uh motivation inspiration creativity and drive are all things that we should all strive for whatever our specific niche is yeah 100 percent. that man is living his best life i think uh it's uh in, i just i see almost a little boy that loves science just running around and making things happen <laughs> i mean uh and in, in in no disrespectful way yeah. at all uh no i kind of no, see something similar good. to you like a little girl having fun doing what she likes to do bringing up her nostalgia in no way shape or form you're a little girl i'm just saying that like that that innocence and that like passion and yes. love uh, I see it's it. the the children are so the, the reason why I said little boy little girl is that they're so unencumbered by just the daily nonsense you have to deal with you can just play you can dream and your you, your mind doesn't go to a place like that's impossible and uh, that's definitely something to try to uh, nurture within ourselves as artists as business people whatever it is that you want to do in the world i love it um now in a perfect world there's never any uh there's never any adversity um i know you spoke a little bit about some adversity that you've felt with uh your manufacturers and kind of how you dealt with that uh was there any other part even in your personal life where you felt some adversity how did you decide you wanted to overcome that adversity in in business or uh, maybe a little in, more what, meta? Whatever, whatever is impactful to you because uh, a, a big thing about just life is that our own personal experiences reflect into the things that we do. 
Um, so I, I'm for sure, I'm, you know, 99% sure that your personal life has reflected into your business as well. So yeah, any adversity, whether it be professional or on a personal level. Sure. Uh, I think maybe the first thing that comes to mind is, um, uh, I grew up, um, I came to the United States when I was very young. My parents brought me here. I'm a Russian immigrant. And, uh, if any of you have immigrant parents, you can relate, uh, they want you to get a prestigious career. Uh, they didn't necessarily push me to become a lawyer or a doctor or anything, but um, I was pretty vocal about my desire to become an artist, and it wasn't met with uh, the greatest of enthusiasm. Uh, <laughs> that reason why I actually went to ar architecture school was because I had to pick something that was going to be practical but also will allow me to express myself and create art in some useful manner so um yeah between the cultural issue with becoming an artist and even this general societal issue of people saying that you can't make money as an artist mm -hmm. definitely it was a big weight on me as a child. Uh, I felt like the thing that I cared about the most was so invalid. Uh, art, art class wasn't mandatory, it was an elective. Uh, it was not seen as something that was as important as your math class or your history class. Uh, there's definitely, as opposed to uh, European culture, uh, there's less of a uh, there's less of a interest well, that, in it, I think, in the United States. That European a, culture's curriculum is a little bit more human-centric, if you will. Yeah, yeah. There's less of a, a I don't know what to call it. it it's not. It's it's, super, it's less. It's uh, if you don't mind, I'll, uh, maybe I'll yeah. help you out. And if I'm wrong, just tell me that's not exactly what I meant. But there's less rigid walls and boundaries uh, to isolate a human. It's like uh, what was it? Einstein or Mike Twain? Might have been Twain. I'm not sure. But how, how, you know, you can have a monkey, a uh, a fish, and a you know a, an elephant, and you put them all to the same test of climbing a tree. They're all not going to be able to climb a tree, but that fish is going to be able to swim in that water and that elephant is going to be able to do whatever the heck elephants do. You're right. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think overcoming these ideas that were so ingrained into me for my entire life of what I can and can't accomplish and being creative, that's such a core part of my identity was one of the biggest challenges and having a creative business and finding success has uh i've i feel like there has been a sort of reintegration uh, because before that i felt like i was at odds with myself like i was always having to deny who i was who you felt on the inside okay yeah. that that is very interesting. So, I mean, lesson learned, uh, hopefully for our viewers, is uh, the world may try to steer you in a certain direction, but really find your calling and your passion and what you love to do. Um, and you'll be happy. And hopefully success follows. Awesome. Um, what have you learned about yourself in the past few years? Oh, so much. Uh... <laughs> Every day is, is like a new lesson, and I know that's so corny, but seriously, every day. What's the favorite um, thing you've learned about yourself? Favorite. Um, mm -hmm. Favorite, favorite, favorite. You know, it's interesting. So I think, uh, again, I'll go back to growing up, uh, especially with how my father was with me. He was super strict about school, and the grades were so important. I grew up with this idea that uh, the more intelligent you were, the better, um, the more successful you would be. Like intelligence <laughs> and good grades ensures your uh, happiness for the future and your security. And something that I realized is, uh, some people say, my, <laughs> my partner says I, I shit on myself a little bit too much, but I'm not gonna say I'm the best business person and I'm not the best designer in the world, but when you're the most adaptable person, 
uh, you you really do find success. Uh, for instance, uh, TikTok has been a big thing these days. Yeah. And there are so many businesses who are just not choosing to jump on it because they think it's lame or they don't know how to do video or whatever. But we've already accrued like 50,000 followers on there just from trying it and uh, going after the opportunity. So I've learned, my favorite thing that I learned about myself is that I'm, I'm definitely more quicker uh, than my competitors are. <laughs> I'm more adaptable. I, I love that you said adaptable. Uh, and I'll jump into that a little bit later. But you just mentioned something that I, I would love for you to go into a little bit more. And that is using your one, you used Instagram to start your social media marketing. Now you're using TikTok. Can you kind of go through how, because a lot of TikTok is like the lip sync and the, um, it's a very fun platform. Uh, but how, as a business person, are you utilizing TikTok and leveraging that to your own advantage? Yeah. So, um, when I first learned about the platform, it, it was a little bit interesting to me. I knew that a lot of people did the, you know, the dancing and stuff on there. However, um, this is, this is the important thing to keep in mind is you, you need to remain vigilant and don't get your ego to be too high because you need to, uh, you need to be aware of what's going on in the world and not get stuck in a rut that's worked for you. So I've noticed that, Oh, there's a lot of like in the meme content that's been going, that's been posted on Instagram of what's going on here. So I checked it out. And at first I'm like, yeah, this is a little bit cringy. There's a bunch of teenagers on here doing weird stuff. But I, the more I, I stayed on there for a while, I gave it a good shot. And uh, I got to say the, the way that they've built the platform is so engaging. You think Instagram is addictive. You can get sucked into TikTok for two hours and it feels like two minutes has passed by. And I think I'm not a social media expert. It's not what I do for a living. I run my own social media. But I think the reason why it's it's so engaging is because it requires you to listen. Um, it's The app is really not anything if you're not plugged in. So with Instagram, you can kind of flip around. You don't have to listen to anything. So you're only engaged um, visually. But with TikTok, you're plugged in here and you're plugged in here. So you're, you're locked in. They have captured your full attention. And unlike Instagram, um, TikTok is basically, the focus is on the explore page, which is the for you um, page that they have. So every time you go in there, you are looking at fresh new content that you might have not seen before. I'm, I find interesting um, news about, uh, not news, but interesting uh, things that I've learned about uh, business, about finance on there. Um, you might have like one video of a teenager doing some dance, sure. But then on the next video, you'll have um, this finance person that's talking about how to read um, like uh, different types of diagrams and charts and teaching you important things about your um, personal finances, for instance. And also the other thing about TikTok is it's purely video. So you can't post any images on there. So it's, if that makes any sense, it's super engaging. And no, it makes, honestly, it makes kind of, a lot of sense. Yeah, it's kind of educational too. Like there's another guy on there that's pretty popular. He um, dissects human bodies and does like autopsies or biopsies okay. or something. Um, yeah, and then he'll like explain to you how different parts of the body work. And I don't know why, but Instagram doesn't have this kind of content. And the content that you do follow on there, it's, it's starting to get buried pretty deep. Yep. And um, I think TikTok is kind of capitalizing on this a bit more because they're, they're, um, because they're a new platform. I've heard that they're just flooding people with the content that they want to see. So they have the competitive edge and more of people who are on the Instagram platform now are switching over to TikTok. You, you heard it here, guys. Um... Always keep up with your social media uh, that is kind of going out into the world because that is where your audience attention and retention comes from. So as you're saying, uh, going back to TikTok. Yeah, to answer my question a little better, I don't know if I actually got to the main point of what I, I meant to say, but 
it's definitely uh, TikTok is a great platform to be more authentic. That's such a buzzword, authentic, but to not edit over edit the content that you're posting. You want to. Uh, the best thing you can do is be honest and show people behind the scenes a little more. Show how you use the product. Answer any questions that you have on the product. Um, where I feel like you can't do as well on Instagram, you can do this. You can do it in the stories, but I've definitely found, um, especially for products like uh, in the beauty niche, it's uh, it's really really effective. Uh, there are so many times that products have um, gone viral on TikTok and you just can't buy them anywhere uh, right now. So, so there's this uh, one girl on TikTok who is uh, uh, in roller skates. She's uh, skating down the street to a very popular song from back in the day and it went super viral and now you can't buy women's roller skates or roller blades anywhere <laughs> all the nice styles are gone just from this one girl um, posting this video and i'm a little bit bitter about it because even before this trend i really wanted to buy a pair of roller blades and now i, I can't buy them so <laughs> here we are uh, discussing the power of tiktok uh, me still being roller blade roller bladeless no, I love it though. I love that um, you have taken a platform uh, that has millions of viewers and a relatively new platform and you took it and you utilized it and you curved it towards your own specific brand, and your own specific niche. Yeah, there's so much opportunity um, on there. I would definitely, it's kind of when, it's just like when uh, Instagram was becoming a thing uh this is the time to jump on it people think it's uncool people don't get it but by the time you do get it it might be too late because the posts will probably not have as much reach uh when they have more of a market share uh well, they already do but um even more so when it becomes facebook sized uh yeah it'll become it's a well on track to be yeah become a very saturated market and at that point as you said earlier with instagram it will get buried right it's just the natural way of, of things. It's it's just repetitive. And when you do realize this, that this just happens over and over again, you can you can see the pattern and you can do something about it rather than being complacent. Okay. Absolutely. No, it keeps you keeps you on your toes at all times. And if you wanna if you if you wanna be on point, you have to stay sharp. Absolutely. Love that. Um, you said you have a mentor, but uh, who outside of her influences you? Uh, good question. Let's see. Um, uh, I definitely look up to a lot of other designers. Um, one of my favorite designers, I would say, out there is Comme de Garçon. Mm -hmm. um, they make really high end but experimental and playful designs uh I, I definitely do aspire to be in that world of things someday um but yeah they're my favorite one of my favorite brands um i think i i do appreciate the eccentric and talented elon musk <laughs> i absolutely love the partnership with him and grimes i have no idea how cool that child's gonna be but um I definitely appreciate people who are very much themselves and uh, are eccentric and are doing great things in the world like they are. Um, who else? Um, I, I love Gary V. He's uh, almost, uh, I feel that's, that, very... that's my man right there. <laughs> Shout out Gary V. You're the whole reason this uh, shebang started. Yeah, he's uh, he he feels kind of close to me in a way because uh, I'm also Russian, so it feels like my angry older brother is yelling at me to do better. <laughs> Love um, yeah, he's a really great dude. Definitely recommend listening to him if you don't. Um, kind of surprised if you don't because he's so popular, but check him out. Uh, who else? <laughs> Honestly, this one's a little bit funny, but I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan. <laughs> really. Yeah, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. I uh, I uh, credit a lot of my uh, personal development uh, to him. Uh, I really started, I think when I started reading his books and listening to his videos, uh, it started getting through to me um, how to become the person I want to be. Yeah, he's very big on the whole uh, change your life, change your outlook uh, 
set. So I've, I've heard a couple of things from him as well. Um, definitely one of those uh, hustlers that get you to want to get up off your, your chair and do something better for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a pretty big self-help junkie. I mean, it's, it's done so much for me. Uh, I mean, some people are a little bit, I don't know, a little embarrassed to admit it, but uh, it, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't study all of these books and really go out of my way to um, really understand, not just read the books, but uh, retain and apply what they're talking about. It's uh- real stuff. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and and how very cool. Um just as I was saying before, um you know, one 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 it's a droplet as a ripple effect. Uh one bit of good advice, one bit of inspiration, one bit of uh visualization can have a ripple effect that just changes everything. Love Absolutely. That. Um and guys, once again, if you uh, definitely want to uh, see any of the designs that we have throughout here um, and you are interested in being a part of the Studio Cult family, definitely check out the links below. Um, we popped in a couple of promo codes throughout this whole entire video, so hopefully you found those promos. If not, here's another one right here. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, so with that, uh i actually have a couple of uh we're kind of we're kind of uh wrapping up around here actually is there anything that you want to go through while while i have you um let's see we've really covered a lot of bases um <laughs> <laughs> how about this any uh any message that you have uh out there for just um people that want to that look at you uh as an inspiration uh i think I can only speak from my own uh, battles that I've had to fight. So if you can relate to, to any of this, um, I would say to don't let people tell you what you should be and what's right for you. If you really feel like you want to do something else. I think I spent a big part of my younger life uh, just saying yes to what my parents wanted, saying yes to counselors and even uh, people in my the university that I went to, they really wanted me to stay in architecture. And at a certain point, I, I don't know, I just had this realization, I'm like, no, I need to do what I need to do. And uh, it was the best decision of my life to just start making choices for myself. So make choices for yourself. Do what you feel is right. Love that. Awesome. But I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. I <laughs> have a rapid fire round for you. So we're oh, going to go to the commotion locomotion. And um, I mean, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be super rapid fire, but, you know, quick enough. Um, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions just to, so that we can understand uh, Yulia as a person. Cool. Sure. Uh, and they're not all serious, so. But one is, uh, if you can give yourself some past, uh, if you give your past self some advice, what are you telling yourself? Stress out less and be more logical and solve the problem because stressing out is not going to help you solve your problems. I love that. Uh, if you could have lunch with one person, dead or alive, who is that person? Uh, Kanye West. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to have uh, lunch with Kanye. I feel like he's, uh, there's so many people I look up to, and I think he is also one of them. Again, say what you want, he's a little bit eccentric, but I, he's one of those people who everything he touches just turns to gold uh, when it comes to creative the uh, pursuits. Touch. Seriously, and uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to learn more about how he does what he does. Awesome. That's a really good answer. Uh, <laughs> if you could have an animal partner, what animal partner would it be? An animal partner? Are you talking about like a Pokemon that follows me around? I'm talking about an animal. I'm talking about your spirit animal, man. I'm talking about what you, what you, who you are, what you love in an instinctual, primal way. I mean, it's no secret that I am a cat lady. I love cats so much. I have 
two animal partners, but I, I, I do find myself relating to uh, feline like tendencies to go my own way and to be luxurious and fabulous like they they are <laughs> i love that luxurious and fabulous they're so fabulous and they know it <laughs> <laughs> oh man um i'm a dog person but that is not this is not about me <laughs> <laughs> uh what is your you know how we all have a worst habit what is your best habit what is a habit that you're very proud of yourself that you have? Um, I love learning. I love learning new things. And I think it's done me a lot of good. I'm not afraid to pursue uh, understanding something that I uh, am not quite comfortable with. Okay. Awesome. Um, next place you want to travel when the world will allow you to travel? Uh, you know, I, I would really love to go to Hawaii. I've been thinking about it for some time. I, I've I love tropical places, trying to find a maybe a, a second home. So Hawaii okay. is definitely top on the list. Uh, I'd love to not be cold in New York as much as I love New York. Uh, four months of summer is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> love that. And the way that e-commerce works, you can kind of work from anywhere. Totally. Uh, favorite food? Easy. Or is it? So... <laughs> My fa- I absolutely love uh, Cool Ranch. Uh, can I say? The- yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. <laughs> I absolutely love Cool Ranch Doritos. They are the perfect, crispy, flavorful triangle. They are my comfort food. I mean, I love so many other things, but I think it's definitely the on a bad day. That's what I'm gonna go try to buy. <laughs> love that. Um, you can only listen to three music artists for the rest of your days. Who are they? Mm. Who are they? I would say, I think it's very rare for me to, uh, like an artist's um, album cover to cover, but I, I love Lana Del Rey. I think her music's great. Um, Kanye West. <laughs> I was about to say you're gonna have lunch with the guy. You're not gonna you're not gonna listen to his music. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure he's on that list. And one more. Uh, this is a little bit of a uh, maybe a little bit of a throwback, but uh, DJ Tiesto. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I love his music. Um, he really was uh, what like I, I remember his music from my childhood. I really grew up with like. <laughs> seeing his music evolve and I, I liked EDM and electronic music before it ever became popular. <laughs> Love that. You're you it was cool. You thought it was cool before it was cool. Yeah, I know. I, I don't like to say that. I don't like to be that guy, but honestly it was a little bit weird to hear uh EDM on uh the radio for the first time. I'm like, people are getting on the screen now? <laughs> it's okay. You're not that guy, you're that gal. So but- uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you personally define success? Mm-hmm. I still struggle, I think, with this because um, I do live in a very expensive city where people are struggling to compete with each other and make a name for themselves. But I think, yeah, I would have to say, it's not financial. I think that there is a certain point where you should be able to make enough money to sustain a normal, healthy life. But I think it's any time that you feel proud of what you did. Um, or if you make someone's life better with what you're doing. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Um, would you rather be a big fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond? Well, I am uh, in New York City right now, and uh, <laughs> I've been refusing to leave as much as I'd like to say uh, a big fish in a small pond. Uh, I can't say that's totally honest. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I think that if uh, you are a small fish in a larger pond, you have more of a journey, you have more experiences, because there's so much more landscape. Yeah, there definitely is. Uh, every day is a, a challenge where I guess if you were a big fish in a small pond, I get quite boring pretty quick. All right, I got two more for you. And okay. w- what's one thing that you do that drives your partner crazy? 
uh, uh, my uh, romantic partner or my business partner? <laughs> Both. Uh, you you set yourself up for that one. <laughs> All right, my business partner. I think I could be a little like, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that, and I'm a bit, I'm a loose cannon sometimes that needs to be uh, managed. Uh, maybe a little bit too much of a visionary. Uh, and my romantic partner. Um, <laughs> Being honestly, I feel like when it comes to my work, I'm so on it, and I could be super lazy when I'm not working. I feel like that's that's mostly everybody. Uh, I know people that work in technology that will not plug a thing in when they're home. Um, so, <laughs> so I get that. Oh man. Um. All right, and I guess for our last one. Um. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh actually I got two more for you. How about how's that? Just give you give you a moment. If you could have a background theme for your because I want to know both. If you could have a theme song for your life when you're walking around, what would it be? And then I got one more for you. <laughs> um, I think uh the Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. It's one of my favorite songs. <laughs> it's such a it's such a bop. Like if I can just Go like this through life, going like I don't know. Dun, 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 I feel you. Um, it does feel that way though. I feel like day by day I'm just like trying to stay alive. <laughs> uh, fun fact: If anybody needs CPR, that is the beat that you do CPR to. Um, oh yeah, it is. Good plug. Good plug. Um, and then the last thing that I want to ask you is. Uh, I don't want to say on your, your headstone, but on, on uh, your macrocosm, what is that one message? Is that, it's the one thing that you want uh, to be defined, remembered, or message that you want to put across uh, to everybody. And this does not include family because family values is a little different than world values. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Um, my partner asked me this, uh, something similar a few days ago. And I was a little bit surprised in my answer. I think at first I wanted to say like, oh, I want to be remembered by my talent. But honestly, I think the message that I so strongly believe in is just don't be a terrible person. <laughs> like, don't be bad to people. It's, I, I just, especially with what's happening now, I see so much, so much sadness and just, people aren't present and are forgetting about what it is to be human and we're occupying ourselves with social media and like comparing ourselves to other people and everyone's concerned if they can buy the Gucci bag to impress people that they don't care about and just learn to play again learn to have fun uh, no one cares about your Gucci bag when you're dead enjoy your life I love that. I absolutely love that. Well, awesome. Uh, Yulia, thank you again for, for, this is our time, but thank you again for, for taking out some time today and uh, being able to talk to us as a whole. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. This is really fun. <laughs> no, this was, this was really fun. Um, thanks for being a friend of the show. Uh, and guys, remember, uh, if you like our content and you want to see more guests like this, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Uh, make sure you follow Studio Cult. All of their information is in the description below. Uh, some really cool people uh, putting out some really awesome uh, products. So definitely check that out. And uh, once again, make sure you all stay Take care. Grinding my whole life.